Oh, hey, you're well, live. What's up, guys? This is Dustin Garman, and uh, this is uh, my co host. Don't be afraid to throw chairs. Oh! <laughs> okay. Beat up Shibi. Thank you, Bumbada, for throwing chairs in my face as I'm going to say my name. Hi, I'm Shibi, and I just got smacked with a bunch of chairs. And uh, welcome to another episode of Tell Us About Yourself. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a little excited about this episode. Yeah. Um, in a way, Steve would probably call it a time warp because it's a time warp for me. <laughs> but we have none other than Brock Smith today, the GOAT. Mm -hmm. And also our current Underworld champion. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> how's it going, buddy? It's going great. Just got a food just, delivery. We're ready for this. We're pumped. All right. Uh, before we get started, I got a few announcements. Uh, don't forget, PAX Unplugged is going on this weekend. Um, also, I want to always remember Bob Dunn as he's recovering. And also, remember my good buddy. I'm going to say our good buddy, um, Ken Fouché. Uh, he tested positive for COVID yesterday, unfortunately. Um Hope he gets to feeling better. Um, well, Brock, like I said, it's a time war, man. Oh, I for sure. Like, I ain't seen you in forever. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I haven't seen anybody super show related at all since 2019 Marktoberfest. Like the very first Marktoberfest, haven't seen a single person. And I know you know we was talking before we went live, but man. Uh, I remember the first time I met you, which back then. I do this a little too cool gimmick now, but back then I used to hold three fingers up for Ooh, three kings. Yeah. <laughs> I was in KSW back then. Um, and we were kind of, at the time, you didn't really have factions. And your underworld, you went in the underworld, actually kind of, it reminded me of a time that we went to Gen Con, I think it was 2018? 2019. 19. All right. Well, we show up at 2019, and we've been trying to feud. X, we were we were King Show, trying to feud with XCW at the time, and we never could get them to respond. Well, we had a Michigan group show up. Oh yeah. Then, which you know, we didn't know y'all. We didn't know y'all, but it was it was nice talking to y'all and stuff like that. Next thing I know, y'all are tag team champions. Or your underworld champions. We're like, 
whoa, we're like flabbergasted. That's you know? what we are. We're the real deal here in Michigan, you know, best of the best, <laughs> best of the best business. That's why we're the four horsemen or back then at least. How was how was that Gen Con for you though, man? Uh, like I said, it was Gen Con. Yes, that was my second event ever prior to the CAC in Michigan here, and that was probably like the biggest push that I've ever had. It was probably the best event that I've ever performed at because I remember um, I was final three with like Bob Dunn and then one of Kirk's friends in the underworld and a triple mm -hmm. threat, and then I lost. But then the next day I went uh, top four with tag with my dad, and then top cut the next day in the world's heavyweight. But then I got diversified mm -hmm. out because, you know, D2, hot topic back then. He's great, love him. And then Tornado and Trio, I didn't really play a lot, or I still don't, so I didn't really play those. But other than that, it was a phenomenal event for me. It was like a huge push really put my name out there. And then that was the event that the GOAT was released, the whole Brock Smith gimmick now. And, you know, like I said, we were flabbergasted. We just, which we hadn't met y'all. Y'all came, it, to us, it's like y'all came out of nowhere and just like took over. <laughs> oh yeah. It was, but, cause it was the two Corey squared and then Ben Kalsmowski and then my dad were the original four horsemen. And, of course, I got to know y'all a lot. And uh, after the Gen Con, we wanted to get get to know you more. So back then, we used to call them KSW after parties. We invite y'all. Well, I think you, your dad, show up. And we were missing two people, both Corey's. I think it was uh, Corey uh, Pitney and the other one's Corey Smith, correct? Yes, Corey Smith and Corey Pitney. And I remember you're getting on the phone. I just want to tell this little funny story. Y'all are getting on the phone. They had just won the World Tag Team Championships. Our hotel is near a Waffle House, and I'm pretty sure they had been drinking. So we try to give them directions. Evidently, it didn't register. And they said, I, I don't want, finally, when they came back to our hotel, they tell us, they're like, yeah, we showed up at the wrong Waffle House, and they were telling us the story of going in there like Ric Flair, holding the tag team belts, walking into this <laughs> Waffle House, and nobody even knowing what the hell's going on because none of us were there. <laughs> it's the wrong. It was, uh, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's just normal, a uh, normal day for a Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, the after party and stuff like that, which we cut some promos with y'all, uh, mm -hmm. you know, after y'all had a successful Gen Con, to put y'all over, we came up with an idea to camera where, you know, three kings are walking through the parking lot and we get attacked by y'all. I oh, remember yeah, y'all had that. the belts. I yep. remember y'all had the belts and everything. And that was just kind of like our way of trying to show, you know, respect what y'all mm -hmm. had done and you know i said earlier um we un we underestimated you and talking to you the other day you went in this underworld championship it kind of kind of i think it can kind of relate because talking to you about getting picked in this tournament you didn't think that you were really given the respect god no it was so the I, I know Schmidt's probably here, but the story goes um, for the Underworld title shop, you know, Fox went through his top eight factions and it came down to me to be either me or Jokerfish. And the story goes, they picked me to do it, not because I'm the GOAT, but because it is, would be hilarious of a 17 year old wins the Underworld title. And we flash back a month or flash forward a month now. And the joke has aged like a fine wine it is hilarious and i don't think anyone expected it i know i surely didn't what the heck are you talking about of course we expected it you beat me to get the shot i beat paul treo to to get the shot that's who i beat i didn't beat chibi though i did <clears throat> i did beat him 
my message that came clear out of that just by hearing you say that is probably some people underestimated you is it related to you know i kind of had the same thing we underestimated you first time we met y'all y'all won the underworld champion so repeat history you under if you underestimate a michigan player they come out with a belt Mm -hmm. that's what john mathis did (laughs) we we're, we're different up here in michigan you know we now that i think about it i feel like everyone that has came out of michigan has one gold except well my dad that's about it <laughs> other than him though i feel like everyone has won at least some sort of gold which is kind of crazy maybe michigan's the most dominant who knows <laughs> i know talking to you earlier i believe y'all held the first cac um i know y'all came out with yep. three cards you came out with destiny's call number 24 you, you came out with a seven. Y'all are actually the ones that made seven seals. Yep. And then they started the one, uh, actually four through six line with Apocalypse. That is correct. Apocalypse. And the first art had the four horsemen on it. Mm-hmm. At, at all in their, you know, dressy robes and all. And I remember that CAC because that was the very first, like, actual event and exposure to the game because before that i started super show in 2018 alpha like a demo for my dad when he came back from the 2018 gen con came out played it loved it um he had a store back then which you know the cac was held played mm-hmm. at locals kept loving it enjoying it and at the time i didn't know how big the cac event was i thought cool you can create your own competitor put you know put myself in the game that'd be pretty dope and the first, like the very first competitor that I played was EC3 with like the un, unfriendly EC3 finish. Mm-hmm. And I made top eight and then I got beat by Corey Pitney. And then my dad won the whole event. And then he said, I'm going to give the CAC to you, Brock, and create whatever you want. And then that's how the GOAT got into the game. And he had already, if I'm not mistaken, his competitor, Matt Matt Smith, had already came out before yours, right? Yep. It was Matt Smith, then mine, and then he auctioned his uh, Create a Competitor event that he won in the Down River Beatdown in, like, forever ago. Yeah. And that's the Sean Loeb one, the collector. That's how Sean Loeb got his CAC off a raffle. Okay. All right. Do we uh do we currently have any questions, Chibi? Yes, we do. We got from the Italian Bombada. He asked Rick. Oh no, oh. I'm sorry. He says Brock after. Oh. Why are you so much cooler than your father? Ooh, you know, <laughs> I think it's learning from my father and then learning all the mistakes he did. Most notably at Grand Gathering. You know, you take those mistakes, you put some cool shades on, and then, you know, you're instantly cooler than the professor. You know, it's the charisma rubs off on me a ton, but it's really the mistakes that he's made that I really learned from a lot, mostly Korean Catherine. And nobody wants to follow a teacher. No, God, no. Education. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, not in school. <laughs> but... So now to some questions that I have. So, Brock, we got to meet really for, for the first time in this previous uh, faction war. Because I, yeah. was, I was a part of or a free agent, so I signed with the Crime Wave for help them get pretty far. In. I My question so. is, how did you end up in the how did I? That is a phenomenal question. I ended up in a crime wave 2019, and I and it was with the like TJ Marconi, the Pete Robinson, you know, the Cannoli. It was with all those guys, and they brought me in because they liked my promo cutting ability and my high ego goat goat and gimmick. But what really got me into it was the 2019 Gen Con. After the performance. They liked what they saw. They liked that I was, you know, very hot-headed, ignorant gimmick. 
they signed me and all that. And that was right before Marktoberfest. So you're one of the early adopters into the crime. Yep, I think it's Schmidt and then me, but I, I have no idea. And how do you feel about the crime wave now? You know, I'm not really too close with a lot of the guys, if I'm going to be honest. You know, living in Michigan and all of them being East Coast, I really can't exactly see them. I, I haven't seen them since, obviously, 2019, so it's hard to, like, bond and get close with them, but... As of right now, I like the direction that we're going with. You know, we're starting to pick up some steam with, you know, Schmidt won and lost the trio's belt. So I feel like we're heading in a good direction with me and the Underworld belt. And I think we can keep building off winning mentality and roll it into Faction Wars. So you think you're going to go far in Faction I mean, we went, we went top four. But if we don't get top four again, we might have to call a certain someone for next year. Hopefully the check doesn't work this time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, another question. So, out of the, how many of the original four horsemen are still even playing? Zero. Zero. Zero? Like your Zero. father's not even. So the only time four horsemen roll around is Gen Con and Gen Con only, and that's because there's also other things at Gen Con, but other than that. <clears throat> No, no one. I mean, if we really want to get into the knit and gritty, there's Dizzy. Dizzy was a part of the Four Horsemen, like, in and out. Not part of, like, the main four, but, like, locally she was. I don't know if she still plays or not. I know I see her a little bit, but other than that, no one plays at all. Would the goat Brock Smith look to form a new Four Horsemen with people? You know... I don't, I'm not so certain about that. You know, I thought about this as if the original Four Horsemen came back, I'd have to either decide leaving Crime Wave or sticking with Four Horsemen. Because when Four Horsemen disbanded, I went right to the Crime Wave. But if they come back, I don't know. But I have no really intentions of building a new Four Horsemen. Maybe like way down the road just to bring up old memories and resurface the yeah. Michigan roots. And kind of live in my dad's legacy, but for short term and like probably a decade and under, most likely not. Is there uh, my question? I like to ask you is because I enjoyed every one of them. Um, you know, even at grand gathering and stuff like that. Your your dad is there a chance he? I mean, does he ever play or? No, not really. It's just Gen Con and that's it. You know, we played. We played at Thanksgiving with, you know, all 1,700 of his kids. <laughs> played some Super Show with that. But other than, like, he probably has no desire of playing online, which I totally get. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's no CACs in Michigan. There's really nothing in Michigan, like, event-wise. So it's kind of, like, just high and dry here. You either play online or you don't play Super Show at all. That's, That's a sad kind of how... Yeah. That's kind of how I feel down here in Kentucky. Was it? Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty much other than two hours up in Louisville. They they do stuff up there, but it's either that or go five six Ghost. hours to Atlanta, yeah, Georgia. Just, so just kind of it's kind of dead here as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So another question I would like to ask before we get to the normal question: Why choose El Super Om? as your competitor for for the underworld tournament was it just picking someone strong picking someone that hasn't actually won too many big titles so i i had two competitors that i wanted to go in and the main surface of of it was i didn't want to play joey janella because i didn't think he was strong enough and that's my personal opinion i know he's a great competitor but in the stipulations he could be easily shut off with like a steel cage match or whatever. So I didn't want to go in with Joey. And then the other two, the other main option was Amazing Red. I honestly just wanted to pick the strongest character I owned because I wanted to win the main. <clears throat> That's really just the surface of it. And I was like, I have all the super cards for El Super Ombre. I know he's pretty good. I can order some more like Colossus Smash and whatnot. And then with Amazing Red, I'd have to get a couple more cards. But then I played with Amazing Red and I don't really like the draw gimmick. 
because it seems kind of boring, kind of stale. I mean, it's great. It's an amazing gimmick. You know, you draw two cards when you roll your five. But to me, it just didn't seem as fun as yelling super kit or hitting them with an L super slam. It just didn't, it didn't have the same, you know, forte. So I just went with next best option, in my opinion. Now, with you saying that, do you kind of, do you kind of steer towards gimmicks that hit certain cards? No, not, this is the only case because I have all the super cards, but if it was another competitor, I would, I hate running them because I don't have a very big collection. So it's hard to hit certain card gimmicks when you don't have all the cards. I just happen to have yeah. the super cards probably because of like a two player set from like 2016 or something. Good to know. Very small collection, but still able to defeat people with gigantic. Yes, I it's because I still run the whole like ten through twelve side chin lock, charging headbutt, and then all the regular stops and all that. It's a very basic. Of, oh, definitely. Of, no. It's because it of the different. roll gimmick. It's the roll gimmicks are amazing in this game. All right, so to go into normal questions that are always asked, but don't always get questions, Mark, we're going to go rapid fire. Pineapple or... Sh you know, gimmick-wise, I'd have to say snake or sheep. Ooh, sheep. Yeah, I'd go sheep either way. I don't like pineapples. Oh, okay. Next one is shark or horse. Horse. God, horse all the way. You know, these the shark is just Disney, you know? You know, that's not OG Bombada. That's not the Italian Bombada. That is that is a Disney baby shark knockoff. That's not what I grew up with. I grew up with the horse. All right. Uh, candy man or candy man? You know, I've never really met either of the two, but I'm going to have to go with candy man. Candy man then. Uh, let's see. The other ones are. They have like... Was it Snake or Llama? Yeah, Snake or Llama. Go with Llama. To write down the rest of it. I, I keep <laughs> I, I always try to go off the top of my head, but I'm just like oh, I'm missing one. Oh, no. it, it's a lot to remember. It's got a lot of things to remember. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Rock. How did the GOAT persona come about? And it's always uh it it's always the G dot O dot A. What, what's it stand for? So G dot O dot A go stands for greatest of all time, but how it surfaced wasn't very a clear path. So after my dad won the CAC, he said, Brock, I'm going to give you the CAC title. I want it for you. And that's great. The very, very original gimmick had nothing to do with the GOAT. And there was two before it that came before the GOAT. GOAT was a third option because the other two weren't really viable. The first one was going to be Dwayne the Brock Johnson, a complete ripoff. And at that point, it was like, this is a hilarious joke. It's a great joke. But I wanted I wanted to be long term in the game. And I didn't really want it to be known as a ripoff from the rock. So I had to find another gimmick. And the second one was the complete opposite of the goat. It was going to be the underdog. And I got this from playing a tag match in the CAC with Pat Mulligan, of all people. And I played underdog with him. And I thought, that's pretty cool. It was underdog overdog. And they wouldn't let me use it because underdog was already in the game. Or overdog. Yeah, overdog. Overdog was, but he wouldn't allow me to use underdog, though. It's too similar. And then the original gimmick for the GOAT wasn't supposed to be the roll same skill bump. It was very, very similar to D2. Instead of rolling two less, it was going to be one less. But it, Boss said that it wasn't overpowered, but it was just way too similar similar to D2. 
and then and we had to switch he is, it up. years later just giving people copy paste of other gimmicks. <laughs> yep, that's what he did for my finishers. It's like it's a complete ripoff from Romeo three thousand, except for he has the better um, skill boost. That's what it was, but it's like complete ripoff. But I'm still curious. How did you become the greatest of all time? I, I don't, I don't know. I was just like, you know, what's the best way for everyone to hate me while being ignorant? Ignorant? Oh my gosh! Ignorant. Arrogant. 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 There we yeah, go. <laughs> English is yeah, not the strong right. suit. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I'm no, lucky on that. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I don't know. It was just something like I wanted to be over the top. I wanted to be a heel. I wanted everyone to hate me. And so far, it seems like it's working. So I was just like, let's just put myself right at the top. And that's just about it. One thing I always wondered, and to get back to the four horsemen, um, I wanted to ask you, were they, um, I, know, I know their run was, kind of short but were they supposed to be heelish i can't remember they were all supposed to be heels every single one that was the main thing of our faction was to get as many people to hate us as quickly as possible uh, my dad did it by calling everyone stupid and the whole professor gimmick yeah. ben was kind of a face but he, he'd throw a little shade at you once in a while and then the two Corys were the different breed <laughs> I don't know what they, they were doing. They were, they, I have no responsibility of Corey Squared at all. I'm not liable for their actions whatsoever. So they're just, they're just there, you know. <laughs> they're just, they're just a different wall file. They're just, you can't, you can't teach people to be like them. <laughs> but I was, I was kind of wondering, and with Ben, which he made, if I ain't mistaken, he made Hurricane Gonzalez. Ben? He I did. Believe. He did make it. And the funny thing about that, now that you mentioned that, is his whole shtick with that is he used to be a wrestler, like uh, very faint, like an indie wrestler. And mm -hmm. now he's a wrestling coach. But he didn't want anyone to know that it was him for the longest time. But everyone knew that it was him. Which I thought was very weird because if he doesn't want people to know, but everyone already knows, it seems kind of counterintuitive there. It was... <laughs> I don't know what he was trying to go for that, actually. I remember at Grand Gathering, he was like, shh. And he gave me like a little <laughs> wristband and it had his character on it. He said, this is getting made soon. Yeah, that is, he did hand out the wristbands. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. Those were good times back in the 2019 days. Those were those were the golden ages. I wasn't even here at that. Man, I, I miss I miss all the promos and stuff like that. Oh and, yeah, the which I wish cool. I wish I'm not sure if we ever followed up on, on those. You know, we kind of chirped back and forth faction wise, but mm -hmm. I was kind of thinking, um, you know, with XEW back in the day, if they would have stuck together, they would have been a cool rivalry for you in, in Chicago. Oh yeah, would be so yeah. I miss those guys as well. I was at the very tail end of those guys' days. So I didn't really know a ton about them, but I knew they existed in Chicago, but I didn't really know a ton about them at all. But I feel like any one of those promos back in 2019 would be like, and you could pick any one of those and they'd be promo of the year here. They were amazing. I think my favorite promo was when my dad dressed up as Eddie Fury and just <laughs> yeah. let it rip on live. And it was the greatest thing ever. And it was just, oh man. Any any we, one of those promos would be promo of the year now. Looking back to in our promos back in the day, we never did in two takes. We would oh. hit it right on the one. It didn't it's, matter. That's oh. the best part about it. Sorry if you heard thunder. Yeah. <laughs> Storms are here. So <laughs> scared me. Ow. But uh, looking back now, like promo-wise and stuff like that, I wish we could kind of 
I know I, I know things have shifted, and I know it's kind of you know um, this game is really spread it out. But I wish we could get back to making promos like we kind of you know like we once did. You know, back in the old days, one take. That's all you need. Say what you need to say. Bury the other person. It was so much fun. It was the best. Going back and forth. Whew. Those those were fun, fun days. I wish we could replicate that again in today's Super Show. That would be like just feuds after feuds after feuds with different factions without like, I don't think any one of us had like gold other than like maybe the Corys with their tag team. But that's well, about um, it. Ben, he won Underworld, didn't he? Oh, yeah, 20, 2018. Yeah. He did. Yeah. He did win that with Lady that's Baba. What I was kinda, that's what I was kind of relating to you winning it now. Yeah. Kinda, we were underestimating y'all, we didn't, that's... which we didn't know y'all. We just kind of took yeah. it to our new players. And y'all come in and just walked and took almost <laughs> all, all the belts. <laughs> it was, oh, man. And it was just like... I don't think it was like main. Was it mainly about like the belts, or is just slamming each other? Well, back then we kind of. Um, I mean, we would faction wise. Some of us were a little bit more cockier than others, but <laughs> we would kind of make promos to, you know, kind of like I mentioned earlier. We would try to make promos. We're not. We're just talking in wrestling terms, not in real life, but. That's mm-hmm. the reason why we couldn't really promo with XCW. I don't think they were ready to, or actually knew that we were actually trying to promo this wrestling game, you know, faction-wise, like a rival. Oh, yeah. And that's one thing I think we tried to do with y'all when y'all had that great Gen Con and mm-hmm. y'all went to the after party, which we're all drunk. Uh, if Ken's watching, that's normally stories I tell him all the time. I'm like, you're a little drunk. <laughs> he goes, you're a little drunk, aren't you? I said, yeah. But, uh, but yet, yeah, promos back then, um, I think one go I always had was, even if I'd done a challenge, we would promo. If I have a robbery, we would message each other and try to help each other actually on promos that are going against us. You know, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, it would be kind of like if I'm promoing with you, bro. I would, I would promo. I'm gonna say I would message you, and I would be like, you know, if you want a rebuttal, you can say this, you can say that. I think nowadays, just my opinion, we don't really try to help each other on promos much anymore. No, and I do because I remember this. I do remember this. You wanted to feud with me, and I was totally down for it. This was 20, 2020. 2020, you wanted a feud with me because I was going to Grand Gathering 2. And I was like, all right, we'll set it up, whatnot. And then you were helping me with a promo that I just made. And then I was about to shoot it back. But then mm-hmm. COVID hit. And then yeah. that completely got rid of Grand Gathering, shut it down. Root, like we couldn't, didn't finish the story at all. And it was just over by then. I think that killed a lot. Of big promos. Mm-hmm. Just stop all you, momentum. Are you going to try to, are you going to be able to come to Grand Gathering 3? So I was actually thinking about this recently. Um, there is, I would say, I need to think about it, but there might be a good chance because it is on my spring break for school too. So it's even more perfect too. I think I think there could be a, a chance that I, I think a good chance I would have to say. All I'll right. be more than happy, catch up with old friends and whatnot, see old faces, meet new people. It'd be great. Yeah. It'd be like the first event. It'd be twenty twenty three. Whew. That'd be four four years. Four, four yeah, four, four years since I went to an event. That's like crazy. And you'll get to see a less sober B. <laughs> <laughs> a change Dustin. Yes. I'm more sober, I should have said. <laughs> no, 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 less sober. No. <laughs> All right. So, Brock, another question that I like asking is, what was your first introduction to wrestling? And wrestling you... or Super Show? Well, just wrestling in general. Because the, you, you don't have to be mm-hmm. a wrestling fan to, be a, uh, to get into Super Show. But I almost every single one 
of the players has now been introduced to wrestling in one way, shape, or form. So, how, so what was your experience, first experience? So my very first experience of wrestling was like very. It was it was weird because it was WWE, but the only way I could watch it because no one in my family liked wrestling. This was when I was like maybe like eight or nine. The only way I could watch it was through Netflix for some reason. That's the only, only way. I, it's so bizarre looking back on it. I don't know how I found it, but I watched WWE on Netflix and I was, wa- and I grew up watching like The Shield and then my favorite competitor was like Kofi Kingston because I thought that his logo was a spider and looking back on it, it is not a spider. It is a Jamaican dude. So that is also very funny, but that's my first experience with it. And then I stopped wrestling and then I got into the super show and I don't really watch wrestling at all. The only way I see wrestling is just through like social media. And that's about it. That's interesting. Uh, there, there's not too many fans that I find that their first introduction was during the, during this modern era. <laughs> uh, welcome to my generation. I'm always down to PM me about 90s. <laughs> but <laughs> especially with your your father, you're saying your father didn't like wrestling, but he, him and his buddies were able to come up with the four horsemen. Which... So they did a absurd amount of research because there's no, I, at least as long as I know, there's no such thing as wrestling like we wrestle but we don't watch wwe at all but i think the four horsemen came from ben because ben i think ben was the wrestling guy because i mean he he was a wrestler like he was an actual wrestler so i think he came up he was usually if there was an idea ben was the one that came up with it and i 99 percent sure he came up with the four horsemen but none of us really watched wrestling i liked the game a lot not so much for the wrestling but just because like the game mechanics Mm-hmm. And I just the, I love the game because it's so much fun. And then the wrestling is just a nice twist because you can throw promos at people. You can act like a wrestler. You can do all sorts of wrestling things. So I think it adds a nice flavor to a really good game mechanic. Okay. All right, folks, if you have any questions that you would like to get in, please get them in sooner rather than later because we're getting towards the end of our show. Uh, wow. Yeah. It, <laughs> an hour flies by pretty quick. Yeah, no kidding. All right, and we got a question from in chat. Dark Prince, if you'd please unmute. What's going on there, Brock Carson? Good. Oh, it's Brock Smith, but all yeah. good. How are Brock you doing? <laughs> my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. I'm someone new to you. Oh, you're all good. Someone new to you. Anyway, I am. Um, sorry about that part. Um, my question is to you. Um, if you were able to go into any wrestling company and you went after the tag team titles, which tag team partner will you bring and which company will you go after? I would probably go to WWE just because that's what I'm familiar with. I know there's AEW. But I'm more familiar with WWE. And then my tag partner would either be, I'd have to stay true to my colors. I'm going to have to go with like Dolph Ziggler. That's one of the guys that I liked a lot. I just like his promo ability and his in ring ing, and ring ability. And I just liked, you know, his overall performance and what he can do. Okay. Well, thank you to Brock Smith. No problem. Carry on, guys. That's also a typical question. Well, it's a typical <laughs> question. But once again, another one of those most people don't treat Brock uh, uh, Dolph Ziggler with the respect that he probably deserves. He's a very great worker. But mm-hmm. so it's it's interesting that you would pick him. Yeah. <laughs> so Brock, if you could remake your character. What, what or what what changes would you make now knowing more about this? I'm you're just you're just asking amazing questions like round of applause because this is something that I've actually thought for for a long time. 
So in 2019, the only hand that I had in creating my competitor was the names and like the goat and like the names of the finishers and how I wanted my character to pose. <laughs> That's it. I didn't have a hand in the art, the gimmick, the finishers. I didn't have anything with that to do. So if I had to change my gimmick, I don't know exactly what it would be considering like the balancing, but I would want something churn roll reliant because churn rolls are good in any stipulation, any scenario, whether it's like steel cage or a ring of fire match, it's good in any circumstance. And it's one thing in the game that is the, probably the biggest part of the game. Like you can draw cards and you can have a stacked hand, but if you can't win churn rolls, you're not going to win the game. Granted, all you have to do is win one turn. Yeah, now these days, especially with the GOAT, too. I forgot about that. I haven't played the GOAT since 2019 in Locals. I'm going to have to bring them out again, though. No, oh. it, it's a fun gimmick of, oh, look, you, you're about to win, but we both rolled power, so it's a bump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've, I've got to ask you, too, about your competitor, because... Um... Because you you know you were talking about y'all were heels and stuff like, like that. Mm -hmm. Your one of your finishes, I remember it has broccoli on it. Yes, that is death by Brock and then Oli. Oli. Yep. <laughs> and it's the uh, it is. Was it kind of chosen because a lot of people don't like broccoli? No. So the reason why I chose that, although I can use that excuse now. But the reason why I chose that was because I wanted the finisher's name to be something correlated to me. So the broccoli one, I think that was the last one that I chose for the name. I just, it's just, people call me broccoli because it's just Brock and then Lee. So it, it just yeah. makes sense. And then I guess pe people do hate broccoli. I hate broccoli. I can't stand it. So hitting someone with a head of Brock, is it a head? Is it like a head or I don't, I don't know. It's something. It, and, you're and throwing like that handful of broccoli. Exactly. That's like the most devastating move ever. Like, unless you're weird and you like broccoli, but you know, devastating I, move. Oh, I gotta God. have it cooked with cheese. <laughs> raw. We're 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 smacking you with a raw thing of broccoli, <laughs> right in the face. Well, there's your heel. <laughs> exactly. <You're> perfect. <laughs> so, another question is, since we're talking about the finishers, who is Gizmo? And oh, why yeah. is he getting revenge? <laughs> so Gizmo, this is a great story. So Gizmo was the dog that I grew up with. He was a rat dog. He was he was a, such a rat dog. He had a beard and it was brown. It was disgusting, but we loved Gizmo. Gizmo in our house is a meme. We any it's just anything, I can't really explain it. It's an inside joke, but Gizmo's a meme. But the Gizmo revenge part is one day our dad got rid of gizmo and said that he went to a city far away with these old people and we can't figure out if gizmo just simply died or if we actually got rid of gizmo so i put gizmo's revenge in a little bit of assault as i don't know what happened to gizmo nor do i really want to find out what happened to gizmo but it's his revenge story now and i put him in the game because you know you know a nice little gizmo tribute okay and he, he's on top of llama or that is Ben. That is the Hurricane Gonzalez. Hurricane Gonzalez. Yep. Well, hopefully Gizmo is happy. Hopefully. <laughs> Wherever he is. And then, of course, the Brock Bottom. Is just, you know. Oh, yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Great joke. Oh, given. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's such a, that's probably out of the three, that's probably my favorite finisher out of the three, like gimmick wise, because you can just hit him. It's to me, it's so much fun. I just love it. Foxworthy is letting us know that he loves broccoli. He's factoring in the thought of you hating broccoli. In the future. Ooh. Uh, title. You know, Let's I can see that. I can see that. I forgot that, you know, people are watching. <laughs> It's just so nasty. Just, ugh. How do you eat it? Like, do you eat it from, like, the stem, or do you eat it from, like, the top part first? Just throw it in your mouth and... Oh, God. No. Like I said, mine's gotta be cooked with cheese. 
That's the only way. <laughs> I'm the same way with asparagus. I like I asparagus. Can't. I just kill. No thanks. <laughs> Your broccoli and cabbage. <laughs> no. So as we're getting to the last couple of questions here, one of the last questions I like to ask is if you ever had well normally the people we ask don't have titles at the moment. But do yeah. you have any <laughs> want to get a larger title than what you've already got? What what is the eventual top goal the brass ring for Brock? You know, I'm going to be honest, I it was the Underworld title since 20 it was since the, I was saw the first title belt because the World Heavyweight one is probably a little bit bigger, but not in my eyes. I always see the Underworld one as like a big ticket item, but I always liked it cuz I just liked how the title belt looked. I like the name of it Underworld. Mm -hmm. And also in the 2019 Gen Con event, I felt robbed from the Underworld title. I was with a rookie Bob Dunn and then some guy from i don't polka brought in running grim fireball the most nastiest combo ever <laughs> I, I forget what fireball does but i know what grim does and it was like disgusting and they banded and they banned it like the next day or something because it was just so awful so i felt kind of like that was taken away from me so for the next three years up until now i always wanted the underworld title because it was some like bittersweet revenge like i know i could get it and i was there at some point and i know i can do it i just gotta get there again and you know things turned out pretty well and we hit we hit the top of the mountain other than that i just can't i don't know what else i'd want other than just holding that title for as long as possible and if i lose it try to get it again if i can't maybe go for the heavyweight title i don't really want to go for the mid card i wouldn't say mid card but like the regional titles because not a lot of people draw attention to that. I always want to be the big ticket, go for the top, go big or go home, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you, if tomorrow was the, your last day in Super Show, you are 100% you are satisfied at least holding this belt. Oh yeah, definitely. I'm actually, uh, I currently don't. Um, I'm just, I'm happy to have you on here. Just I'm happy to be here, man. <laughs> Catching up, reliving, reliving the glory days. <laughs> you can't do that with too many people now. But and it's. You were talking about earlier, you know, you were talking about that tag team that got banned. That's when they really first started. Uh, I think that's when they were really starting to get into making mm -hmm. these tag team Bands. tournaments and stuff. And. So, you know, we learned it's a lot's changed since then. Oh yeah, there's now there's like cards specifically made for like tag team events and whatnot. Back then, it was um, when we went top four. There was this disgusting combo that we would abuse: an aerial lipstick and then the witch hunter, witch hunter general, and mm -hmm. we just target one guy and make their life miserable. <laughs> yeah. And it was great from our perspective. It was awesome. I loved it. Well, that was also it. that was also plus before we started the you know like the single gimmick like um, oh, like yeah. tag teams now you know you can only target one opponent. Mm -hmm. Used to the tag you know a lot of times you could I know I used to play as a rage, oh, yeah. and so if either one of them would row a strike plus two you know that's that's like the whole like that's why Ariel and General Witch Hunter were extremely broken. Because if you have a one in three chance of either burying two or burying a random card from your hand every single time, and it was god awful. It was amazing, but it was horrendous to go against. And I don't know if you can do this still now today with those like nasty combos or whatnot. The thickest combo I ever saw was uh, somebody actually came out with Caveman and your dad, Matt Smith. What does Which, Caveman uh, do? Caveman can actually copy his partners or anybody. Oh in, my gosh. In, and then you so, discard four. Wow. Or actually, I mean, you would have to discard two, two but then, but two then again, yeah. yeah. That they constantly, would be... 
if you're hitting caveman in Matt Smith or mm-hmm. something like that, they would discard four each time. It that is, would that's just crazy. like a hand and tag. That's a hand wipe immediate. Like your yes. hand's gone. Man, that that sounds like a lot of fun. Might have to call <laughs> the professor up and be like, "Hey, we gotta go one more time." <laughs> So we got Creative Goon calling us old and saying that it's the team. And International Pool has a question of Husk is the cow or Willow the Is it bad if I say I don't know either one of those? That is not bad at all. Okay. Well, I don't know either one of them. <laughs> in a way, he could say a wolf or do you like steak? <laughs> I love steak, so I'm going to have to okay. go with the steak option. <laughs> all right. He chooses the cow. That's how we'll do it. (laughs) He just laughed it off. (laughs) All right. So, Brock, at the end of our show, we like to give the special guests an opportunity to ask one question to each of them. So if you have a question for both me and uh, Dustin, please ask it. Man. That's a tough. I didn't. I didn't even come prepared with questions, guys. What the heck? I. I don't even. I'm mean, totally drawing a blank. They're supposed to remind him, Dustin. <laughs> that was actually my fault. <laughs> Man, put on the spot. Ah, oh, shoot. I feel like. I know. I feel like I know a lot about Dustin. You know, we live in the glory days. I don't think. Man. And then Chibi. I don't know a too. I don't know too much about you, Chibi. But I don't know what question I would ask. <laughs> that this is awful. Um, Chibi, what's a good question to ask if I was asking Chibi? That, that's a meta question. Oh <laughs> man, I don't Oof. know. But Great uh, of Goon says you should ask Dustin if he still falls through walls. I see a door back there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the door's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great, great question. Oh, man. Oh, I don't know. How many, Dustin, how many competitors do you have? Because I know you have the All-American and then well, GTS. I was actually going to say this towards the end of the show. I'm actually, I've got GPS. That was my first competitor. Uh, true American guy, Gregory Patrick Scott. That was the first split personality ever character, and those two. Uh-huh. I am actually going to say in springtime, I am actually going to make a new persona. It's Ooh. more of, it's too cool. Oh, <laughs> there you go. See, that's hidden information I would have never known about. I never really liked the two. So if I was ever to make another competitor, I would. I don't think I would ever have another persona because I'd always want there to be just like one goat. And if I ever do want to do that, I'd have to talk to boss with like keeping the same um, logo and everything. And the only yeah. thing that I'd really want to change with my competitor is just the gimmick. I mean, it's fun and it's a lot of fun, but the only issue I have with it is that it doesn't trigger that often. And when it does trigger, it's not like a guaranteed anything. It's just a bump, draw one, reroll. It's annoying and it's funny, but that's just about it. I think for me is a GPS, which that was my first ever competitor. I'll eventually bring him back promoing. I'm just trying to come up with a backstory um, that's going to suit him. Mm-hmm. Um, I plan on bringing him back, but I like too cool because I can kind of be a little bit of myself. Granted, things like, like the gold and all that I'm mm-hmm. going to be wearing is nothing like me, but um, I can actually dress nice and stuff, wear my Nikes if I want to. Oh, yeah. And make promos. <laughs> It'd be pretty hard playing Super Show in a straight jacket. Yeah, I tried it once. See, with drunk. the. The- <laughs> I really did. <laughs> That's amazing. The see with the goat, I wanted to add also a little bit of me because I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm very um, over hot headed, 
but I do like to sprinkle that in for like the super show effect because it's very easy to like promo saying that you're the best, no one else is as good as you and no one ever will be. And it's super easy, but it's also just super easy to come up with that stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just like, you just got to bury them, say how much, how bad they are and how much better you are. Call them B plus players, whatever it is. And it's just a little bit of me, which makes the game more fun because I don't know, you can just be yourself with, you know, mm -hmm. sprinkling a little bit of super show. It, I've been asked before, I'm like, why did you come up with a true American guy and which I was doing the whole split personality. It's hard for me to go back. And oh, yeah. Forth and it's really tough. That's why when we had uh, Ron Hogue a couple of weeks ago and I'm talking to him, I love his competitor so much because it depicts a split personality into one competitor mm -hmm. and his gimmick and such. That's something I like. That's something I never really thought about up until him having – because the two split characters, that's a really – its I'm, I'm telling you, it's not easy to have a, yeah. a true American guy all the way to, like, a sociopath. It's not its yeah. not easy, folks. Like, <laughs> you could do two feuds at once, and you have to be two completely different people. It is, like, a lot of work. And then if you form – but if you form that into one competitor, you don't really need mm -hmm. to worry about that too much because it's already built in because it's a split personality. I was actually, oh, sorry, Jimmy. But Brock, you, you have just a few more minutes. So if you have a question for me, Bayon. Man. Whew. Dustin, what do you want to know about Chibi? Because what you don't know, I probably <laughs> certainly don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um. <sighs> That's <laughs> not little, easy, oh, is fine. it? <laughs> <laughs> How did you how did you come up with um, Chibi? Because I know there's the Chibi art style, but how did like the whole Chibi persona come about? The Chibi persona? Sure. Yeah. I mean, the Chibi persona is just me turned up to a hundred. Very simple. I see. If if you were asking me to ask him something, I would have just thrown in the chair. <laughs> no, 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 no more chairs. Well, I mean, I like the money, but no more chairs. <laughs> we got to help them out, folks. Come on. What's it? You know, take a couple bumps, you know, for the kids, for the money. I, I just realized that I haven't cleared my bump cash in quite a while. Uh, I, I have like 200 saved. 8 bit is not greater than TV and. Saying stuff like that. <laughs> Crazy. All right. But, Brock, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Uh, anytime. It was quite a pleasure learning a bit more about you, hearing some of these hilarious stories, <laughs> hearing giant lightning bolts striking behind Dustin's house. You can only get it here, folks. And, Dustin, who do we have for next week? It's actually open. Ooh. Um, I actually uh, currently do not have a guest. Um, I do I do want to pitch in and say that uh, a couple weeks ago I did mention that I am looking forward and I'm currently working on having Anthony Gungone on for next month, somewhere in December. Wow. The big name, folks. So, keep Brock, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just want to say, Brock, man, it was a pleasure having you. And, uh, it's making me feel older. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I've seen you as a 13-year-old, and, look, you know, seeing you now, man, you're holding on to the legacy. You've got the Underworld Championship. And like I said, folks, do not underestimate a Michigan player. <laughs> Never. <Apparently. laughs> Never. It was it was a pleasure being here. And honestly, I wanted to do this show since the very first season. I don't know if it was like 2019, 2020. I don't know. I never had the time with it for school and whatnot. And at coming back and seeing it revive made me really happy because it was something that I always wanted to do because I don't really talk a lot. 
come in Zoom rooms. I just kind of sit there, show up, roll tens, hit finishers. You know, I do my job in and out, kind of like a nine to five. So I was, you know, pretty stoked when you asked me if I wanted to be on the show because of course I do. I love hanging out with you, Dustin, talking to you, reminiscing about the old days of 2019. It was great, phenomenal. I'd love to be back anytime. You got me thinking, maybe I'll talk too much. That's why I rode too many fives and sixes. <laughs> you gotta let <laughs> the dice anyway. do the talking. Dice do but the man, talk. I've learned that. <laughs> All right. Like bro. I said, it's a pleasure having you, brother. Anytime, man. Can I get a bye, man? Until bye, next man. Time.